just praise Him. Everyone praise Him. We praise You. We love You, Lord. We exalt You. You are awesome. wonderful we can come to God tonight. Amen. At the throne of grace, we can come boldly, confidently, not because of ourselves, but because of Jesus Christ. He has made the way clear. Open the door. Open the way. And now we can talk to our Father. Tell Him what we need. Let's worship him together. You are Alpha and Omega.
give you all the glory.
know that chorus. Let's sing to him. We will bow down and worship you. Worship you. Worship you. We'll bow. But if we lift our hands and sing as we bow down our hearts and worship you it's not just our bodies that you want to bow down the main thing is that our hearts would bow down low before you you are great we are small you are holy we needed the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from our sins thank you for being our father tonight we bow down and we worship you and we ask you to lead us in an important time of prayer. Could be the last prayer meeting we'll ever have, Lord. We don't know. So help us to put all of our hearts into it. For we pray it in Jesus' name. And everyone said. So draw me close. Find a way. Help me find a 
one more time. Praise the Lord. It's good to praise the Lord, right? That should be a note that stays with us all year long. In everything, give thanks. Oh, that men might praise the Lord. That's what the scripture says. Uh, we want to make a few announcements now, and uh, we want you to listen real close, especially those who live in the uh, tri-state area, so you'll know what's happening here at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. So we're closed today, as it were. And now, traditionally, we have a week of prayer, uh, the first week of the year. And the plans were Tuesday through Friday, January 4, 5, 6, and 7. We have canceled that, and we're planning to open, uh, hopefully, God willing, on Sunday, January 9th. We will be open live at 9 a.m. and 12 noon, God willing, on the 9th. Oh, why have we shut down this week? For the same reason we're shut down today. It's, uh, we're watching uh, closely what the city is saying and the number of cases. This um, Omicron variant is so contagious, affecting so many people. We just felt like uh, if you're going to do something, do it with all your heart. We can't have a week of prayer when everybody is nervous about uh, this variant and also uh, riding on the subway. Subway might have a lesser schedule, they say, possibly for this week. Given all of that, we are moving the week of prayer, not going to lose it. We're moving it to the first Tuesday through Friday in the month of May. Hopefully everything will be in the rearview mirror in terms of COVID and the weather will be nicer and we'll be able to come out and pray Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So very unusual here, but we are not having any services this week on the 4th, 5, 6, and 7th of January. We are opening up, God willing, on Sunday, January 9th at 9 a.m. and 12 noon so we want you to get ready uh for that number two we want to mention that um uh our daily devotions are going to continue i'm starting the book of first john first john so if you haven't been tuning in go and begin to tune in come on new year i hope my comments later will inspire you to take a extra careful attention to the Word of God this week and this year. Um, we're going to start First John, kind of verse by verse. Uh, through it, learn so much about um, the Christian life. It'll help you. It'll strengthen you. And it's every single morning, about eight minutes long, and we hope that you will enjoy it. So start with us. Read ahead now into 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, 5, 6, 7. That's what will uh, take a week to get through. We also want you to know that we are uh, going to be baptizing people at the end of January. So you can go online and uh, sign up uh, online, brooklyntabernacle.org. And we'll give you more information, but toward the end of the month, I believe it's the 23rd, we will be baptizing those who have received Christ as their Savior, put their faith in Him, repented of their sins, and said, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. And if you have done that and never been baptized, let's obey the Lord. Let's start the new year on a note of obedience. Obedience to the Lord. Believe and be baptized, the Bible says. That outward act of an inward fact and grace that God has given you in your life and heart. 
So please remember, just go online and you can learn more about that and becoming a member toward the end of the month on the 30th. We're going to be bringing in new members. So you get all of that online, brooklyntabernacle.org. So now a word to everyone. We need your help, obviously. Shut down, church not open. End of the year when giving usually goes down around the holiday season. God has been faithful and helped us. But what can I say? I, I say to you from the bottom of my heart, please remember us in your giving. Whether you live in Brooklyn, uh, Bayonne, New Jersey, or you live in North Dakota or California or Texas or Florida, if you're uh, supporting this ministry, we so appreciate it because it involves more than just our overhead here. As I often mention, we have missionaries literally around the world who depend on us, this church, for their support. And in many uh, of these cases, we are their almost sole support or the overwhelming majority of their support comes from this church. We take no offerings for missions or any other uh, separate entity. It's just one collection every service. Please help us as the Lord has prospered you. I pray that you will remember to be a giver this year. God loves a cheerful giver, but you give as the Lord leads you. If anyone coerces you to give or makes a false promise about giving, uh, that's not the reason you should be giving. We give because he's given us his son. Just like the Bible says we love him because he first loved us, we give because he's given us the unspeakably magnificent gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So God bless you as you help us this year in giving. Let's all of us... Be alert who we can talk to and who we can love. You know, if you just love someone, you'll open their heart because the world right now, as far as my lifetime is and my experience, this is the harshest, meanest world we've ever had. This is the hardest, meanest New York City we've ever had. This is the worst, meanest, hardest, terriblest social media we've ever had in our world. I mean, it's bad. It's bad. But... You know, the, I met a minister from the Philippines one time who told me how God blessed his church and there were assaults from the enemy. He said for a period of two months, we had riots and revival at the same time. They had fights breaking out in the lobby and at the altar, people were just getting filled with God. That's God's ways are not our ways. So we want you to remember that. Let's, let's use our remaining time here to do, keep praying, but pray for someone closer to home. When you came to the church today, you came for the prayer meeting, and I appreciate that you're here. But really, what, when we get in the building, we have to make another movement, which is the movement of our hearts to the throne of grace. That's what prayer is about. It's going to the throne of grace. God invites his children to come to something called the throne of grace. It's invisible. It's not a throne of judgment. It's not a throne of, of criticism. It's a throne of grace. And that's where we're to bring our needs to the Lord. It kind of fits in with Jesus saying, my house shall be called a house of, which means that people make another movement beside their body. See, my body is standing here now. But when we begin to pray like we did uh, as... Um, and let us, uh, our hearts are moving to the throne of grace in the spiritual realm. So let's just review this so that we can maybe bring some people we love, not just uh, Lebanese and Syrians and Iraqis. Look at this one verse. It's a key verse in the New Testament. I'd say it's one of the most 20 important verses. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Let's not lose our faith in Jesus. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize, empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us 
in our time of need. Keep that verse up, please. So Hebrews is the book where the writer, who's no, the commentators are not sure who wrote it. And it's the book that shows don't go back to Judaism and the Old Covenant because through Jesus we have a much better way. We have a better prophet than Moses. We have Jesus. We have a better high priest than Aaron. We have Jesus. We have a better sacrifice than the blood of bulls and goats. We have the blood of Jesus. So we are part of a new covenant. We're part of God's family. And he has gained acceptance for us with the Father, not with anything in ourselves, but because of what he has done for us in his great love and mercy. He's opened up the way that we can come to the throne of grace. In the Old Testament, the most sacred places were reserved just for the high priest, and that once a year on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. No one could go into the Holy of Holies. But now, through Jesus, we have no elite priest caste or pastor caste or minister caste. We all, as children of God, can come boldly to the throne of grace. We don't have to say, Pastor Brian, would you pray and go to God for me? No, go yourself. Go yourself. Go yourself. He'll receive you. We're happy to pray with you, but go yourself. Oh, I know, but you're a minister. No, the way Pastor Petrie got to get there and Pastor Park is the same way you get there, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through what he's done for us. Come on, let's just affirm that. Clap. So, so then... So then, then means because of everything Jesus has done for us and because of the new covenant, it's much better than the old covenant. We're not under Moses, we're under Jesus. So let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. So let us now, the writer is saying, because of what Jesus has done, don't be afraid. Don't say, look inward and say, I'm not what I should be. How would God answer my prayers? And look how I failed him last week, last month, or yesterday. Let's not do it. Let's be cleansed by the blood of Jesus, confess any sins, and let us then come with confidence to the throne of grace. Let's come into God's presence and and lay out our needs before him. He is the one inviting us. We did not make up this verse and say, God, please let me. Can I once a year, once a month, can I please get into your presence? No, God is the one saying, come, I love you. Come boldly, come with confidence into the, to my throne of grace. I got stuff for you. I got blessings for you. And it's all because of my son, Jesus, that you can come with confidence. That word confidence means some translations have with boldness. I think that's the King James. Um, therefore, let us come with confidence or freely speaking. No fear. No holding back. Let us not, you know, swagger in there cocky. No, we walk humbly, but we come in freely. I am a child of God. I have a father who wants to help me. I'm coming in the name of Jesus. Devil, you're a liar. I'm coming through the blood of the cross. Come on, one more time. Let's just say amen to that. We come with confidence. Oh, but look at what you said yesterday, last week. No, I'm not taking my eyes off of Jesus. Don't you get me to look inside. I'm not looking inside. Christianity is not about introspection. It's about looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We do introspection. We search our hearts. We confess our sins. But that's it. Otherwise, you end up all depressed, looking inward. I'm not what I should be, and all of that. No, we look to Jesus. So now we come to the throne of grace. Why? That we might may receive. Notice, when we pray, we're supposed to be in a receiving mode. We're not praying to just say words. We're opening our hearts now to receive what God has for us. God is a giver. We're the receivers. You can't have anything in your life unless God gives it to you first. The strongest Christians are just the ones who receive the most. They don't have anything in themselves that is innate, that makes them stronger, more spiritual, more faith. Everything comes from God. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Nobody, every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven. So the strongest Christians, the best preachers, the best whatever, are just the ones who receive from God. In themselves, they're not worth two cents. 
but they've received from God and he takes lowly and lifts them up and uses them. He takes marred people, broken people. Uh, I want to teach one day, one of those, I'm doing one in early December on great Christians every believer should know. You know, Pastor Park, I just read a whole lot about in this Christian history magazine that I have about William Carey, who some call the father of uh, missions. Uh, He went to India and... um, uh, his story just it just blew me away. I knew a little bit about him, but I mean, you talk about someone unlikely. You talk about he learned something like twelve languages, translated uh, the the scriptures in India into um, uh, languages for the people, New Testament, other languages. He just learned languages like you you would have a, a, a tuna fish sandwich. He'd learn a language. He just like yeah, I'll, I'll learn that language. But his English was so bad that when he wrote letters back to home, did you know this? He wrote letters so bad English that people wrote back and said, how can you translate the Bible into all these languages? You have the worst English of anyone we ever met in our lives. Is that not amazing? Grew up poor, dropped out of school, had no education, but went to India and lived there for over 50 some years, I believe, died there, and uh, just a hero. Well, why did he do that? Because God gave him the grace. Where did God give the grace? At the throne of grace. The Bible doesn't say, therefore, let us come boldly to church. Church is good, but what's the good of going to church if you never get to the throne of grace? How many want to get something fresh at the throne of grace? My goodness. That's what it's about, where the action is. So what happens at the throne of grace? What does grace mean? Well, grace is unmerited favor. I went over this with the prayer group today at 12 noon. Grace can be defined God's unmerited favor. We're saved by grace. What does that mean? We are accepted by God, not based on anything we've done. Good. Nothing. It's purely grace. God giving us something we don't deserve because of what Jesus did on the cross and the mere fact that we trust Jesus. How many trust Jesus today? Okay, so we're saved by grace. The throne of grace, God's unmerited favor. If you try to earn it, he'll push you away. He's not paying anybody anything. He only gives gifts. Who does he give gifts to? People who feel their their neediness. That's why pride is so horrible in God's sight because pride keeps us away from what God has for us because proud people can't pray and feel their need. They think they know it all. They can do it all, but but. The humble, oh, he loves the humble. They just come and believe and put their hand out, and he says, I'll fill it. So at the throne of grace, what do we receive? We receive two things. Well, let's give one other definition of grace. Grace also can mean God doing for you what you can't do for yourself. So let's say you're running out of endurance on the job. They're pressing you or the stress of the pandemic or whatever. You're breaking down emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. So now what do you do? You got to go to the throne of grace to receive grace. And grace is God doing something for you that you don't deserve. It's It's his love in action. It's God bestowing something on someone who just comes and says, help me, Jesus. So let's just go back and keep this sequentially right. So bless you. So the Bible says that when we go to the throne of grace, we receive mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. Oh, how many are happy for mercy? I do not want what I deserve. I do not want what I deserve. How many are with me? I don't want that. Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. It means pardon. It means compassion. So come to the throne of grace. That's why before you become a Christian, you have to pray. You got to go to the throne of grace. A minister can't save you. Formula can't save you. You have to have a personal contact with God and ask for mercy. So mercy is given at the throne of grace. And we Christians need mercy because we all break down and sin, hopefully less and less every day of our lives. But we sin. If anyone says he has no sin, John says he's a liar and the truth is not in him. What do we do with that sin? We go to the throne of grace and we say, Lord, forgive us, show us mercy. And he wants to, he will. 
That's why Jesus taught us to pray, Father, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That wasn't a prayer he ever prayed. He taught us to pray that way. So we receive mercy at the throne of grace. What's the other thing that, that Lacey needs and Sharon needs and the pastors and me especially need? We need grace. So what's grace again? Grace is God giving you a gift that you don't deserve. Grace is God doing, giving you strength to do things you can't do on your own. God, God's grace is, let's say like this, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives liberally. Wisdom is a form of grace. He gives you a gift from above. It's not your wisdom. It's not your IQ. It's not, has nothing to do with your degree uh, from high school, whatever, uh, college, PhD. Grace is God's gift so that you can do things that you couldn't do in the natural. When you run out of gas, he gives you gas. When you run out of love because of that person being so cantankerous, he can give you love. How does he give you love? At the throne of grace. He gives you grace, the grace to love, the grace to endure. So at the throne of grace, if you play Jamal, at the throne of grace is mercy and grace. And you gotta go there. By the way, it says at the end of that verse, Notice, to help us in our time of need. Some translations has, he gives us grace just when we need it. At exactly the moment we need it. How many have ever had that happen in your life? Just like you go, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then, oh, Lord, help me. And then just at the moment, grace comes. Oh, God is the God of grace. Aren't you happy he's the God of grace? Just a quick story. I don't think I've ever said this publicly. But I was in the ministry not even a year. Still living in New Jersey. And I was invited to speak. And the Lord showed me in the morning. In fact, I told my wife, so-and-so is going to call me and invite me to speak at his church tonight. She said, what? I said, no, I was praying. And I just, God showed that to me, I think. So sure enough, two in the afternoon, pastor friend still said, and listen, you know your heart up if you were asking me to come preach at that time. I mean, people were, when I preached in the church, people were ripping up their membership cards while I was preaching, just like, no, I can't take this guy. So he calls me, he invites me to come. So I'm all hyped up like, oh, praise God. God is setting this up for me. So I study, I pray in the afternoon because I know this is a divine appointment. I know it, nothing. I have nothing. Do I have sermons I could preach? Are there verses? Yeah, but nothing alive. So I have nothing. So I go, well, God, I know you'll give me the sermon in the car on the way to that church in Plainfield, New Jersey. Nothing comes in the car. I get to the building. I'm sitting in the front row, right on this side, like where William is right now in Anne-Marie, and uh, nothing. And their praise and worship is going on. I have nothing. Listen, zero, nada, zilch. And I'm saying, God, I know you sent me here, but I'm in trouble. I need your help. Now they're introducing me. I have nothing. You know what it is to have nothing? How many have ever had nothing? I mean, just nothing. I have nothing. This is a, as God is listening to me, he knows this is true. So they're introducing me, and I go, well, we all are proud, and God wants to humble me, so I'm going to go up there and just be humbled and break down. They'll call 911 or something and take <laughs> me away, and that's it. Just, that's it. But I need it then. Okay? But I said, Jesus, help me. Give me grace. As he's listening, God is listening to me right now. I woke up. They had a row of steps over here, Jamal. I'm walking up. I turned the corner. And let's welcome Pastor Jim Cimbala. Who, and you, you don't even want to know how bad it was back then. And I'm taking two steps. And I'm just saying, here I am, Lord. Give me grace. As I take the third step, if I remember... An entire sermon comes into my head. Listen, an introduction, 
a point, a second point, a verse. And by the time I walked, which didn't even take three seconds, by the time I get here, I have a message. Where'd that message come from? Not from me. It came from the throne of grace. Come on, God gives grace, grace. Someone said to me afterward, like, what a message. It must have taken you like days to dig in and get all of that. If you only knew. But come on, how many have had God save your bacon right at the last second? Come on, wave your hand at me. If God just like in financially, family wise decision, whatever. So now let's close this way. How about someone you love in the five boroughs? Five, someone you love, related or not related, but you care about that person. They need mercy. They're not serving the Lord. We know that verse. Come on. And we can always pray for ourselves. But it's a prayer meeting. Prayed for Lebanon. Let's go further. How about uh, someone you know that you talk to once a week, once a month at least, that they need mercy because they are living against God's commandments. They're in a bad place. Should they die, you don't have great confidence they're going to spend eternity with Christ. That's the truth. Those are the realities of life. Number two, do you know someone who is a believer but really struggling, really struggling in the five boroughs, metropolitan area, and they need grace? They, they trust in Jesus. They're, they're Christians, but they are faltering. This pandemic is knocking them for a loop. They're not what they used to be. That is the report from all over the land. God has used the pandemic to shake the tree, and those branches that are, those fruit that are not connected to the strong, to the branch, they're falling on the ground. They're disappearing. So we have people that need grace. We, we know people who need mercy from God, mercy. Maybe our own children, maybe relatives. Well, I prayed before. Well, then pray again. How about that? Pray again. Come to the throne of grace. The Father says, come confidently. He loves to help us. How many believe that? He loves to help us, okay? If my children come to me or my grandchildren, you think Levi's going to come to me and say, Papa, I need something. I'm going to go, get out of here. Never. That's impossible. So if I, an evil man, have that grace with my, my grandson, how would, how would God not want to hear us tonight? So let's bow our heads. If you got someone who you know that really needs mercy, in fact, you're concerned about them, as I was saying those words, your heart started to beat like, you know what? They're, they're facing eternity without Christ. What, what does it matter how much money they have or what job? Retirement plan. Stand up for them right now. Just stand up. If you have someone, they need mercy. Those of you still sitting, if you know someone who know, you know is a believer, but they need grace. They need fresh strength. They're, they're not doing well right now. They're Christians, but something's happened. Stand up for them. Just stand up. Okay? We're going to do old style Brooklyn Tabernacle meeting. Everybody come forward. Come on, everyone. Walk forward. Come on. Right to the front. You're representing someone that needs mercy. You're representing someone right to the edge and fill in. And if you can only get in the aisle, only get in the aisle. Don't be nervous and afraid. No one's going to give you the virus or anything like that. We're in a prayer meeting. Come on. God's going to protect us. Get that fear out of you. As you're stepping out, you're representing someone. By you coming, you're saying, God, so-and-so needs mercy. I know it, and you need it, and I'm coming to the throne of grace. Not for myself. I'm coming for them. Are you with me on this? We're representing someone at the throne of grace. Or I know this sister or brother in Christ. 
uh, relative, whatever, in the church here, and Lord, they are struggling. They're not in a good place, the best I can tell. Not judging them. I just know there are not good signs. They need your grace. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. In your presence, we praise you, Jesus, for what you're going to do, Lord. We're not praying in vain. Satan, you're a liar. We're not praying in vain. We break through tonight in the name of Christ. November 2nd, we break through. Pour out your mercy. Pour out your grace. we thank you that you made a way so that we could come with confidence to the throne of grace you're our high priest you're our sacrifice you're our savior you're our lord you're emmanuel god with us thank you god that we could pray tonight and bring these loved ones friends family and we're not going to let you go we're going to keep visiting the throne of grace lord morning noon and night we're just going to speak their name out to you. And you know what we mean. Mercy. Grace. Give us the boldness and the leading of your spirit to speak to them. To point them to Jesus. Arrange those moments that we'll know this is totally God. Arrange those moments, Lord. We can't force it, jam it down their throats. But when you open a door, nobody can shut it, God. So open those doors for us. I thank you for the sweetest congregation in the world that we pastors can shepherd. Thank you for Pastor Park's contribution tonight, helping us pray for Lebanon. Prepare us for this weekend should we tar should you tarry lord and we're still alive bless the the movement meeting the btym bless the saturday women's meeting lord uh and and give us a great sunday on on uh, time going back and the marathon and all of that just help us to run our marathon lord we're running a spiritual marathon give us strength every step of the way Get us home safely, no incidents, no anything, no accidents. Watch over and keep us, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen.